Hello and welcome back to Rebellious Menstruation. Today we're looking at The Mists of Avalon, a retelling of the Arthurian legend by King Arthur's sister Morgane, often called Morgan Le Fay in other works, published in 1982 and written by American Marion Zimmer Bradley. The Mists of Avalon was at the time a radical retelling of King Arthur and centred around the priestesses of Avalon. And, of course, the holders of the old pagan ways rather than on the knights and the round table knights of Camelot. This book remains fairly in the realm of feminist retellings. However, this is and of itself a furphy. The first collection of Arthurian legends was by Thomas Mallory in 1485, Le Mort d'Arthur, and has been noted as a fairly misogynistic retelling of this folktale, particularly based on legends from uh, the 5th century. And it was actually kind of well known at the time as being a misogynistic retelling of these legends because, of course, these legends existed prior to Le Mort d'Arthur. Obviously, when this severely one-dimensional tale where, men's are, where men are heroes and women like Morgan Le Fay are sorceresses without any other motivation or characterization become a canon for all of the myths, any other retelling then becomes problematic. However, this narrow, this narrow telling of folklore legends obviously then narrows the myth down. Morgane, the protagonist of the myths of Avalon, centers um, around, follows her birth um, to a minor lord and Lady Grain, who was raised within Avalon and sister kin to the High Priestess of Avalon, Vivienne. Before her mother, Queen Lady Grain, <laughs> marries the High King, Pendragon Uther. Morgane, a princess gifted with the sight in a court increasingly influenced by Christianity, allows her aunt Vivienne to convince her mother, Queen Agraine, to foster her to Avalon, where she grows into a well-educated priestess. However, due to her aunt's power plays, she is manipulated into performing a ritual she ends up disagreeing with and leaves Avalon. This leads her to the world, um, to the wide world. Um, her brother, King Arthur's Arthur's Camelot and his wife uh, Guinevere and of course then Arthur's Court of Knights. The rise of Christianity is a start in stark contrast to Morgane's priestly ways. Both the old ways and the new ways are portrayed as both negative and positive. Morgane's initial running from Avalon was directly due to the high priestess's intentional manipulations and negative that Morgane never really gets over and this manipulation has far-reaching and dire consequences in the novel. While quite a few of the criticisms are centred around the negative portrayal of Christianity, the old pagan ways are not presented in star light either. Most of the in-book commentary from priestesses such as Morgane and Vivienne uh, that disregard Christianity a commentary on the lack of education um, in, in regards to educating the priests of Christianity and that only men are betrayed. Unlike paganism, um, there, where there was representation, representation by both men and women because this represents the balance of life and that sex is not shameful but part of this balance. The contrast with Christian the portrayal of Christianity, where the silencing of women and sexuality by undereducated priests 
of course, is going to come off in a negative light. The moral compass of both pagan and Christianity are often and frequently portrayed as skewered and power-driven. Viviane will not admit defeat or that her actions have devastating consequences to both her family and Avalon. Priests will not admit their misogyny or restrictions and it has devastating consequences for King Arthur and Camelot. Now on to Marion Zimmer Bradley who in recent years has become quite a controversial figure. Bradley, June 3rd, 1930 to September 25th, 1999, wrote over 30 novels, including the Dark Over series and, of course, The Mists of Avalon, which spawned several prequels and sequels. Bar Bradley is a well-known fantasy and science fiction writer and encouraged fan fiction of the Dark Over series, but became embroiled in controversy when a fan story had a similar uh, arc to an unpublished manuscript of Bradley's. While there was no such connotation that Bradley's or the fan story uh, were stolen, um, but due to their familiar content, um, Bradley um, uh, withdrew all permission to write um, any fan fiction of the rest of her work. However, Bradley encouraged legitimate submissions and legitimate written submissions to the Sword and Sorceress's anthology fantasy series. She was editing the last issue when she died in 1999. However, in 2014, her daughter Moira Greylands accused Bradley of sexually abusing her from age 3 to 12. Her father, Walter H. Breen, was also reported for child molestation and he was convicted. Bradley was well aware, publicly admitted to be well aware, of her, um, of her husband's abuse well before the ac accusations became public and the uh, legal drama and convictions were real. Both Moira and Mark Greyland have since spoken about their experiences within a household where both their parents were child abusers and molesters. In response, quite a few publishers chose to donate to Save the Children and the RAIN Network. Uh, both of these charities will be linked below. Obviously, these allegations should be taken very seriously and these uh, colour the experience of what was once a favourite book. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.